Good morning, everybody. And uh, sadly today, I have to report another resident passed away. He was a man in his 40s with uh, multiple underlying health issues. And, uh, you know, my condolences and prayers go out to the family. And uh, again, it's not easy, um, regardless if you have health issues going on or not. It's what we've talked about, uh, a man in his 40s that uh, passed away from this. So unfortunately, we have now 132 people that passed away from the COVID-19. And again, my prayers and, and thoughts and uh, condolences go out to the family and to the workers on the forefront that are in the hospitals and the nursing homes, especially our nursing home at Shaker Place. Um, I can't thank you enough for your dedication and in, in, in being there for people uh, in their, their needing time. So again, thank you to everybody. But uh, again, it's not easy. As of today, we have 2,489 positive cases of the coronavirus. 509 people under mandatory quarantine. So, uh, you know, up 10 from yesterday, but that's an increase of 15 positive cases since yesterday. So we had 16 new positive cases yesterday. We're at 15 today. So uh, again, um, you know, I got a little excited when we had the zero and we haven't had a zero increase since like the 23rd of June. So, um, you know, again, it, you're gonna see this, you know, in um, one of the reasons, you know, we decided to have a press conference was because of the person that passed away and some other stuff we have to put out there. But um, we are getting a lot of questions from teachers, from parents, concerned about school. Uh, had a nice uh, press conference with uh, Chancellor Malachis and President Rodriguez. And uh, look, there's protocols in place. And, um, you know, we have to start opening up, but we have to do it in a safe manner. And we also have to do it in a way that we're watching our hospitalization rate and seeing how this, this part of this uh, COVID-19 is affecting us moving forward and obviously bracing for uh, the second wave if it does come, which we hope it doesn't. But this is uh, the start of the 11th day. We're uh, below double digits and uh, with our new positive cases, which is always good. Um, but among the new positives, four are healthcare workers, uh, eight have close contact to a positive case, and three didn't have a clear source of infection, which the EPI people are doing their jobs to find out uh, how they're connected. So that's 9,307 people have now completed quarantine. 2,453 tested positive for the virus and have recovered, an increase of 10 today. Uh, as I said earlier, nine people still in the hospital with our hospitalization rate staying the same as yesterday, 0.3%. Uh, uh, 36% and uh, same as yesterday. We still have, currently have one patient in the ICU. Um, again, that's one of the things at the control room that we deal with uh, when we talk at uh, 1400 is basically to watch the hospitalization, watch the ICU beds. Um, and thank God it's not affecting us, but again, losing somebody um, in their 40s uh, is, is alarming. And, and I just want to let people know out there, it's still there. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to tell you to continue to do the practice that we've been saying since the beginning. Um, over the last five days, there's been an average of 7.6 new positive cases. Uh, it was 4.8 the other day. So uh, you can see how that's going up a little bit. And again, which I keep saying, if you don't even don't have signs or symptoms, please get tested. Please get tested. Um, you know, you're, we're going to get through this uh, if you continue to do the right things of coughing into your arm, cleaning your hands, staying six feet apart, and wearing your mask properly. Um, but please call the University of uh, Albany at 1-888-364-3065. It's seamless. It's quick. It doesn't cost you anything. Get tested. And again, it helps us with mapping and tracing. It helps us going forward. Uh, the mobile testing sites, uh, obviously with Whitney Young, please call that number, 518-465-4771. And again, I, I, I know we've said this for the last five and a half months. If you don't have insurance, we pay for it for the uh, Whitney Young. You Albany in the state's not charging you or even asking if you have insurance, so which is good. Priority One and Gilliland are great partners there, 518-867-8040, and the Rite Aid in, uh, in Colony by 155, as always. Um, please just remember, wear your mask, cough in. If you got to sneeze, sneeze into your arm. Do the right thing, and we'll continue to get through this. And we're going to have these like this. Um, we're going to jump up. And we're going to go down. I was just hoping 
we're really getting through all this and uh we're also hoping you know with flu season starting in october people go out and get your flu shots uh but most importantly uh with the flu we're hoping with everyone wearing masks now and being mandatory that maybe that keeps that down um, and also you got to be careful because the symptoms of the flu are similar to the symptoms of the COVID-19. So some people are going to get a little scared, but if you get that baseline now, you know where you're at. So, uh, you know, these are things that we have to continue to uh, worry about. But before COVID-19, the public health crisis that we were focusing on for years was the opiate epidemic. Uh, prescription for progress at the Times Union paper uh, is still continuing on the meetings. Things don't stop. It's just we're doing things differently. But uh, because in 2019 we lost over 50,000 American lives to the opiate, that's a vast majority of the nearly 71,000 deaths from overdoses. Um, sadly, despite seeing a 5.1% decline in overdose deaths in the U.S. during 2018, we saw nearly a 5% increase in 2019. And we know that the uh, pandemic and the economy shutdown and quarantine has been tough on people uh, mentally, physically, uh, emotionally, and uh, unfortunately, uh, people dealing with the new world out there, that's not easy for people to deal with. I've said this a thousand times, and I'll say this again. Your threshold of things are different than other people's threshold. Um, I have a higher tolerance for pain than most people do, because being in the political world, you become a punching bag, versus other people that don't. Um, so again, take a step back, take a deep breath, and just realize that that might not bother you, but it might bother that person, and uh, give them the support and love that they need. Um, so earlier this month, the American Medicine Association announced that more than 40 states were reporting increase in opiate-related deaths. Already this year, drug overdose has spiked by 18%. Those, uh, especially those including across the river in Rensselaer County and talking to County Executive Steve McLaughlin, who's been on this, and unfortunately their county seeing more of an overdose than any place else in the Capital District, uh, but he's been on top of it, and we've talked constantly about this. Um, but again, it's about awareness making people know that the help's there and you know when we were shut down people couldn't get to the clinics they couldn't get to the support groups uh, they couldn't get to the the network of people that they rely on for recovering you know and if you don't know anyone in recovery thank God if you don't know anyone struggling with alcohol or drugs thank God you don't um, but the reality is it is a struggle and it's hard and every day is a new day and every step's a tough step and it is one day at a time and through whole this whole new thing we've gone through being shut down is even more harder on individuals struggling with addiction than anyone else so we have to be there for them and uh, I thank Steve what he's doing and Mark Polenkartz is doing in Erie County uh, but due to the fennel lace cocaine they're seeing in Erie County, um, their numbers have gone up. The last report we received showed Omni County wasn't uh, experienced the spike in overdoses or overdose deaths that other counties are doing, um, which is good. Uh, but between January and June of 2019, there were 35 overdose deaths in the county. That number has uh, decreased slightly to 33 over the same period this year. I've long said that one of the most important things we can do to solve this crisis is remove the addiction and encourage people to get help and the stigma that goes along with it. Don't be afraid. Listen, I will tell you, I have friends uh, that unfortunately committed suicide because of their drug addictions and other issues that they had. Um, and and uh, I have family members that stood up and did the right thing. And uh, you got to be with people. You can't kick them when they're down. I always say this, I will get you healthy. And when you're at 100%, then I'm going to kick you in the ass. Uh, not until then. You know, not until you're set and you're healthy and you're on the right frame of mind and you're moving forward. Then, then I'll knock you down and, and give it to you. But you got to be there and you got to support people in their tough times. Because I can assure you, not everyone's perfect. So uh, don't, you know, people in glass houses, as they say, that saying shouldn't throw stones. A Santa College poll from July found that 29% of the people reported they didn't know, they did know someone who died of an uh, opiate overdose. That's an increase of 5% since 2018. Uh, ahead of the International Overdose Awareness Day coming up on Monday, it's critical that we continue to highlight how drug addiction is hurting our communities and sure people know that the services uh, have remained available uh, since we've reopened and gone through. A little bit different form. Some people like the support groups, but now we can meet under 50, so that's going to help uh, a lot of people. Every 
Tuesday through Zoom, we've had uh, hosted an open overdose prevention training, teaching participants how to spot an overdose and how to use overdose to reserve um, to re advise uh, anyone that is going uh, for the overdose so uh, with the epi pens and stuff like not epi excuse me Narcan thinking the other thing Narcan training uh, we've also developed and innovated policies like uh, OD map it will help us track overdose hotspots in the community and send resources to that area which is important again kind of like the epi people tracing to where the problem is and addressing it so we can help people we're also working to, on expanding uh, medic uh, medication assistant treatment in our hospitals and emergency rooms that help people uh, kick their addictions so again a lot of great programs going on um, that we're doing the open access program directed by our mental health department has been an important tool to make sure addiction treatment options are a reality of uh, in a uh, readily available excuse me uh, where people are ready for it so the number is uh, 1-866-930-4999 and it's uh, up on the screen as you can see also today, I'm uh, excited to show off a new tool that will allow residents to properly, properly dispose of unused, unwanted drugs called Deterra. So uh, being President County Executives of America, this company came in to us. They sent us these packages. It was nice of them to put our name on here. But uh, the Deterra is uh, one of them things that uh, can properly, environmentally friendly to dispose uh, your unused medication. Uh, so we're saying, please, we're going to make these available throughout the community um, and, and get them out to everyone. But each one of these uh, pouches can... Uh, deactivate 45 pills or six ounces of liquid or six patches you just need to add some water so you can fit 40 pills in this little package it's environmental safe it's friendly uh, I know a lot of people think that sending your flushing your stuff down the toilet or uh, down your drain or throwing out in your garbage is safe it's not it affects the environment it affects our streams uh, please dispose of this correctly um, again these will be made available and it's so simple you just add add a little water into the pouch and uh, you can use it until you get to 45 pills in here or you can't fit any more so appreciate that 70 percent of our uh opiate prescriptions after surgery go unused imagine that 70 percent and we've talked about this in the lawsuit which is actually going in the right direction that we've been sharing on a national level um so there'll be some exciting news coming out about that but more importantly is to change the cohesiveness of the pharmaceutical companies to stop giving long-term prescriptions alternate to pain medicine and i know there's people out there that are going to need pain medicine i get it who have chronic pain uh, but the people that go and get 15 day supply after twisting an ankle or a knee that has to stop and it has and, and laws have to change to uh, stop having people get addicted to these prescription drugs 70% of people who uh, abuse drugs get them from friends and families think about that uh, I've said this before if you go into someone's house you're going to their bathroom you go into their medicine cabinet are you gonna remember there was eight pills in there or are you gonna remember uh, there was 30 you know you, you don't think of it you don't count it um, um, I, I've, you know, joked around that you can, you'll notice if your liquor cabinet's a little less, you'll notice if there's uh, some beers missing in your fridge. But how many people could actually tell you how many prescriptions they left unused in their medicine cabinet? That's why it's so important to get these pouches or the partnerships that we've done, and I'll get into that. But um, we worked with local independent pharmacists to uh, accept unwanted drugs from the community, no questions asked. Uh, which is so important, uh, and I can't thank the pharmacies enough, M Mars and Cohoes and uh, Del Mar uh, Pharmacy, Four Corners, and uh, Crestwood Pharmacy, and I think there's another one I'm missing, but again, you can drop them off. We made packages available for free uh, to just put your stuff in there, and, to and we'll get rid of it, which, uh, again, has been a huge success. Uh, so again, we also don't want people flushing stuff down the water, which I've said, and all that other uh, thing, so please, you can go to to Deterra and you can go to their system and you can get it if you want to buy it yourself there's a variety of different packages you can buy in buckets um, and like I said it's it, this is the most uh, friendly environmental product that we found out there uh, and that's why I like it so 
just changing gears a little bit more on a separate note i want to make sure that the public knows about the ongoing construction project along the Albany county rail trail that will be shutting down a piece of it at night but it's closed at night anyway but we want to make people aware of it improvements will be made under the uh, cherry avenue bridge in the town of bethlehem each night between monday august 31st through thursday september 3rd we're hoping the work will be completed by september 11th and uh, it will be done between 8 p.m and 5 30 each night but the uh, portion of the trail won't be won't will be open during the day so again people that who enjoy the rail trail and all of it we want you to go out there and continue to do great things and if you see right where that bridge is we knock down the house and we're going to be doing something there with the train station that still exists and a few other improvements we're going to be making on that that have been long in the works so uh please just be courteous when you're going through there and work with us uh, again our mental health support is available seven days a week from 8 a.m to 5 p.m 518-269-6634 please call if you need to as always the 24-hour sexual assault hotline number 518-447-7716 and the 211 in the new york state hotline again my condolences go out to the family that lost their loved one yesterday and to all 132 people here in Albany County that have lost their lives to this virus. Um, again, our prayers and condolences.